Big day, big moments. Father and son, dangle. Let it begin. Yep, big day for little man because he just turned three. It's time for him to hit the lake. Mano y mano, just me and him, never done that before. When I was three years old, my dad took me out on the Tennessee River. I caught my first bass. I have not pushed fishing on him whatsoever, but he's pretty obsessed with it. This is currently a uh, fishing rod attached to a bike. You can see there that nice little backlash. But today I want to go after catfish. Why catfish, you say? They're easy, they're very impressionable uh, for a kid. I think they're fun, and they're also my favorite. It officially now, I'm announcing it to the public, they're my favorite fish to eat. A blue catfish is my favorite fish to eat out of fresh water. I have dialed a recipe. I will show you guys if we get some catfish today. I mean, it's restaurant. You don't, you think you're eating seafood from somewhere it's incredible you ready to go brother yeah yeah you ready to go fishing you've been asking me to go fishing so now we're going you want to catch a catfish yeah let's do it well my little buddy here fell asleep if y'all can believe it. <laughs> it's the short ride in we better shut that trap you're gonna let the flies in can never get him to take a nap at home. And as soon as you get him in a car. Buddy, we gotta go fishing. We got fish to catch. Remember you've been asking me to go fish? Go fish, daddy. It's that time. You're that boy, I'm that dad. So let's go. Let's go froggy. You wanna go fast? Yeah. Uh, I think we're gonna take it easy, brother. Now it's really windy today. <laughs> Look at that face. What do you think about that motor? <laughs> what do you think about it? He's like, that thing's ready to rip. Okay, guys. <laughs> yeah, you can sit with me, buddy, of course. Oh man, this is this is so cool because I'm having memories of uh, me and my dad and going out in his um, little Terry Bass boat, uh, just puttering around, man, and didn't even need to catch anything. And I can remember just like one, what I caught, like one fish that just, oh, it's like it made my year back in that time. So I'm hoping to pass some of that along uh, to this young man uh, and Emmy as well. The area, that we're going to fish here with these jugs. It's windy, um, but our, our jugs are basically gonna drift across a big flat. And this time of year, a lot of fish are on flats, out close to deep water, uh, pretty much every species. And our jugs that we've got set up, I've made a few modifications to them, but essentially they're, they're the same ones that you guys have seen. Um, experimenting with some, uh, some larger corks, see if that makes a difference. Uh, also bumped up to 50 pound mono on some of them as well. We're gonna throw this cut bait, we're gonna space these out, and then we're gonna sit just like this with a couple of sticks out uh, and just look for bobbing. Um, there's a lot of waves, so. Yeah, daddy caught it yesterday, so it's, it's not alive anymore. We're gonna use it as bait. Oh. Yeah, we're gonna cut it up for bait. Okay. Okay. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get the Get the tail, using the old timer, stainless. This thing got left out in the rain yesterday. It doesn't have a speck of rust on it. So if that tells you anything, that's nice. Always nice dealing with a boat knife. You ready to catch them, Ben? Yeah. I'm ready to catch one or two. They are good. Mama loves me when I'm bringing home them catfish. All right, always make sure you don't have any scales on your hook points. And we will uh, go ahead and toss this one in. Should be about 18 foot, so we'll see where that one ends up. Okay, you want to drop this one? Yeah. All right. We'll get it ready for you. Well, I'm not going to lie, this bluegill meat looks delicious. 
It looks delicious, Ben. I would have liked to eat these myself. Yeah. You want to let that one go? Okay, you hold it and let it go. Okay. You throw it out. All right. Bombs away. Say bombs away. Bombs away. Two jugs out. All right. Okay, we got three out. They're bouncing in the waves. There should be a lot of shad getting pushed on this shoreline. Had high winds here uh, all day. So, oh, so we've set these out on a on a pretty long line, probably about a hundred yards. So they're about uh, 25 yards apart. 20 foot. Send it. You want to do it? All right, you throw it out. Just drop it out. Go, bombs away. What are you thinking about? I'm good, I don't need any. So we're in perfect position. It's just windy, it stinks. It just makes the atmosphere not as cool, but a lot of bait fish, a lot of activity on the streets. Some people may think that this is is boring fishing, but to me, it is anything but boring. Yeah, there is a, constantly something to attend, adjust, monitor. I mean, especially when I got him in the boat, but even when I'm by myself, I love jugging because it's you're constantly doing something. Oh, oh gosh, that one's going, bud. That one's going, let's go. Didn't take it down, but it definitely, it was moving up, like into the current. I don't see anything now, but it definitely got, it got spanked. He almost looks like he's about to take a nap, y'all. You got pirate blood in you if you can nap out here in this wind and waves. Okay, no bites there. Okay. It's just too windy, too wavy. It's gonna be a little splashy. Apologize, we're gonna go out to our original line of jugs and we're gonna check them. We don't have anything on this stretch. We're gonna go the other side. Cause daddy doesn't like this. Makes me nervous with you. After your history falling in. I can't tell. I can't tell looking at them. If they got fish on them or not. Oh, that one's got one. That one's got one, Ben. We got one! Out here in the deeper water. Jug is bobbing, buddy. Careful, we got hooks up here. Come on this side. Come on this side. Might want to put your goldfish down. Oh yeah, this feels big, Ben. You want to help me? Oh my gosh, why is it coming up? Oh, this feels real big. Oh, we got a catfish, Ben. We're, we're bringing him in. Come over here by daddy. You want to pull? Pull the rope. Oh, he's pulling, he's pulling line. Pull the rope. There you go, pull him in. Pull him in, pull that string in. Pull, pull, pull. Pull, pull, pull. Oh yeah, that's a good one, Ben. Pull, pull, pull. Pull, pull. Pull them in. Put those goldfish down. Pull, pull. Pull, pull. <laughs> this is a good one, y'all. Woo, man, this is bigger than Emmy's. Woo. Uh, don't break the line. Here we go. Look at that, bud. Hang on, the boat's gonna move. I think he broke it. Oh no, he spilled all the goldfish, Ben. <laughs> That's okay, all right. As long as you say so. What do you think about that? 
Honk, honk, honk. That's a perfect, perfect, perfect size eater. Couldn't be happier with that. So we'll go ahead and throw him in the well, get back after it. Yay, Ben, we got one. Did you eat all those goldfish? Good, I didn't, I didn't really like those on my carpet. All right, despite getting, you know, a bite in 20 minutes, I'm gonna leave because this is just not enjoyable. It's freaking me out with him being in these waves. Just want some calm waters. If I'm having a hard time, just imagine him up here. Can I go play? No fish on this one. It goes up and down when you got one on there. Oh, Ben, it took our bait. Got all slimed up. Look at that one. I mean, that's covered in goo. That's a catfish that rolled all around and came off the hook. All righty, Ben. We're on a mega, mega shad hole right here. Drop it. Now, bombs away. You gotta say bombs away. There you go. Drop it. Good job. Will you get me a fish out? Get me a, get me a fish out of there. Good job. Big flats for big cats. I know you want to do it. Let me help. Can daddy help you? Can daddy help you? No, I can't. Benjamin, Benjamin, this will hook you real bad. You're getting to be a big boy and you want to do it, but. Hey now, listen, there ain't no crying out here. There's no crying in the silver bullet. Need a hug? Okay. Here's you a hug. You want to drop it? Uh, okay. Okay. And drop it. Go. All right. Bombs away. Ben, you're such a good little angler. You're putting the bait back in the... Give me a high five. I like what you're doing. Great spread on a point here, and it just sucked. Well, Ben, you're earning your boat badge today. You did really good with me. I'm proud of you. See, this is gonna be our thing, dude. Yeah. This is gonna be our thing right here. You pull them in, I'll wind them up. Get her going. Oh, we got one of our baits taken. What the heck? It's all right, we'll try again. We got one good one. And we're gonna cook them up nice. Say, we'll see you later. Wah, bam. One special order catfish. I saw so many future fishing trips in, in that trip, if that makes sense. Just, man, he was great. He was great on the boat. And uh, I could just see him going on a lot of adventures with me. And I just wanna quickly show you how I like to clean them. So I like to use a boning knife and then use a fillet knife. And this is this is like a semi a semi flex. Helps to navigate uh, the tissue and the bones a little bit better um, because of that stiffness. And then when you go to take the skin off of a cat, because I, I think this deters some people from from eating catfish is cleaning. They're actually just as easy as uh, any other fish. I like to use a pair of grippers like these, and then take the whole side off and then fillet it. There's this dorsal spine you wanna go around. You wanna find that spine and I'll kinda of step back for a second and I'll, I'll find it with my finger once I get past this, uh, this dorsal spine right here. And then I'll press down till I really start to feel that spine. 
And there it is right there. And then once you find that, then you can kind of follow it all the way down. Pull and flick, pull and flick that knife, and there's going to be a bunch of bunch of rib bones up here, and you'll just navigate those. And that's where it really helps to have this little bit smaller, semi-stiff knife. Come in there, get to this final little skin section. And you just take that whole piece off, just like that. In the kitchen with OSG, fall festive dish. We've got the flannels, she's in Halloween dress. I think we're all feeling it. We all want the fall vibes to be here. They are here. This is the kind of Halloween dress I have. Hootie hoo! That's a, uh, that's an owl. It's a bat. It's a bat. Oh, is it? Oh, totally got that wrong. <laughs> we just had a house showing. Scrambled out of the house. And we're back in. I want them to hear it from you of what you think about what I'm about to do. The latest and the greatest and uh, what you think about catfish. I want to hear it from you. Are you doing it the way that you did it? Like, yes, I am. Okay. Yes, I am. It's best fish. I think that's gotta be the best fish I've ever had. Best fish, best. period. It's it's up there, maybe top five. I mean, but for a butter. freshwater catfish, everybody thinks, you know, you, you, when you say the catfish, I feel like it has a nostalgia of, you're going to the catfish house to get something fried with a bunch of biscuits and butter and sweet tea, and there is that, and it is good, it's delicious, and I love my Golden Krispies of all, all kinds. But let me tell you guys, Crappie, it has been my number one. And it's kind of been tied here for the last year. Now, Blue Cat has surpassed, and this is the reason why. You can cook it different ways. It is a thicker cut of meat, it's fattier, and it allows you to get a, a gourmet restaurant style dish out of a freshwater fish from a lake. And I'll also tell you this, I've cut open a lot of fish. And you know what I've seen the most parasites in? Crappie? Largemouth bass. Oh. Num oh. Number two? Crappie? Crappie. Number Crappie? three is nothing out of a catfish. I've never ha seen a parasite in a catfish. I'm sure they exist. But I, I'm sure some sloppy channel cats out there have parasites, but I've never seen one in a blue cat. Okay, that makes me feel so much better. But I'm kind of disgusted that you just said you found a lot of them in crappie. <laughs> I, no, I didn't say a lot. Oh, like okay. a bass is, it's, it's actually pretty prevalent. Why are you cutting Crappie is rare. Huh? Why are you cutting open a bass? I, I don't really like to eat those, to be honest with you. But every once in a while. Allowed. I thought it was like illegal to keep them and eat them. No, you can keep five a day. Oh. Over 14 inches. Seriously? Most less, yeah. Wow. I thought it was just like a sport. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you actually ate them. Sport! I know, I know. I recently put something out on uh, on my on my gram, like, is bass fishing a sport? And uh, I don't think it is. Well, I used I've to evolved my opinion, uh, opinion on this, but I don't think it's a sport uh, because, because of what I just said. You can keep five a day. Yeah, but I feel like you have raised me inches. in this relationship and maybe I got lied to in the very beginning. Is that no, we don't early on them. in my tournament <laughs> life, uh, I, I probably made that that large impression. <laughs> but over the years, I have come to uh, understand that, that, with, that we have a natural resource. It's beautiful. It's amazing. It is fun to catch. But, uh, but a sport, I don't know. It's like I wouldn't call hunting a sport. You know what I mean? It's like putting... Um, it's like putting... Uh, I don't know, like a less serious thing, like making sport of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? That was a really long rant. I'm sure people are ready for this recipe, so let's get cracking. All right, we can go ahead and start with the prep of the fish. So, you guys already know, clean them. Let's pop open the fridge. Wabam. Want to keep them chilled. I know, I use this thing all the time. I'm sure some people ask what it is. This is the game. This is the game maker, baby. I like to, as soon as I clean my fish, I bop these, uh, I bop the fillets into this. Um, and then it's got this really cool, 
center in there that has holes in it and then you can uh, basically get the moisture off your, uh, your fish like, we, like I have done here. So see all these extra juices that are down here? You want basically chilled and semi-dry. It's okay for if it's moist, you just don't want them dripping wet because what we're about to do is add olive oil. We want to that oil to get into the fish. There yeah, you you're go. gonna need yourself about 10 seconds of, of glug on the olive oil. Now this is the other part that I've been, I've been sort of dialing in is uh, the actual preparation. And um, this is what I really like about this technique is you're going to save money on your seasonings. So I used to go through a lot of blackening seasoning. Um, I've got a bottle right here. I've used it uh, quite a bit and it's still going strong because of the way that we are utilizing it. So I like to get a, you know, about five seconds of shake in there. I don't want to overdo it. I want to overdo the olive oil and underdo the seasoning. We really want to, we want to let that fish speak for itself. You're getting a lot of the fish cooked properly and that is the key. We're going to use a probe. Incredible pieces of meat, guys. Now, I want you to look. This piece is thinner than the front part of the catfish, which is thicker. So we're gonna pull these off at different times. Obviously these are gonna cook a little faster and we're, we're gonna go all in. All of them, slop them around, throw them around in the mixture. And this really helps to get a nice even coat on your fish. And when you put them all in there and you mix them around together, some of the fish that is over seasoned will rub off on the fish that's under seasoned. So you just kind of get this nice uh, homogenous mixture. That smells really good. Mmm. That's our side dish. We have rice too, in case you don't like this. It's cauliflower? It's cauliflower rice. All right, now when do you want me to start cooking the fish? We have 15 minutes till the rice is done, so do you want to do it now? Yeah, we can go ahead and get it popping. All right, this part is key. We're gonna go medium heat right here, and we're gonna let that thing rock and roll until it gets actually hot. So I'm gonna let this sit for at least five minutes because we got an electric stove if you got gas. You, you just let her rip, but I'm gonna show you when it's the right temperature to cook. Nonstick, it's for the beginners. It's great when you're trying to learn learn to cook Easy Mac and stuff like that, but this, we're in the big leaks, folks. We're in the big leaks. All right, olive oil. That's your friend. All right, here we go. The pan is hot. Now we're gonna add some olive oil to it and you should see it smoke. That's what you want to see. You wanna see it Bubbling a little bit, sliding around like liquid gold around that pan. And that's what we have going right here, guys. See that smoke? That's what you want. Roll it around, roll it around. It should be very viscose, very viscose. That's what we got. We're going to place our biggest pieces in the hottest part, the center of the pan. Bam. Now I want to let this go for a couple of minutes until it starts to get just a little bit of brown and crust on that other side and then we'll flip it. <coughs> oh man, black and AC got me. Also not going to put this in the oven. In my, uh, my past recipes, I've cooked it really fast and hot both sides and thrown it in the oven. You can do that too. But this, I think we're gonna congeal a, a nice little crust on, on both sides. Just the way I cooked it the other day, it was amazing. And we're gonna add some butter, but it's gonna be in a different way than in, in this pan right here. So you guys stay tuned. This is happening 
tap it in real time, real quick. The thinner pieces will go ahead and give them a flip. I bet they're ready. You're flipping the rice at the wrong time, lady. Okay, rice is a flip. All right, here. Now you're sticking me behind the camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's time for the flip. I just want the I want the folks to follow the action real time here. Oh no! Oh no! That's yeah, I'm under a little pressure right now. That's what you want. Nice brown golden. You really want more contact than that. See how the uh, the most contact is getting getting brown. That crust is key. That's what that's what OSG was raving about mm. the other night. Like I like the crust. By the way, we need to fan up, fan up a little bit. All right, we'll move, move this. Get this one's ready for a flip. There we go, that's folks. It. That's it right there, baby. That's why I went to this big stainless steel pan right here with uh, the full full bottom so I can, it's got a full bottom. Love it. <laughs> you can really get all the pieces in there and cook them properly. Probe up, 135, this is key. This is how they do it in the big leagues. We're gonna test a small piece, just, just to give it a check. So we're already almost there. 133, 134, pretty much there. I'm gonna go ahead and give these big pieces a flip. I think they're ready. Wabam. Wabam. Oh, that's the piece right there. That's for us. That's for us. Let's go. Another couple minutes. Another couple minutes, we're, we're going to be done. Curve this guy. That guy's on 138 in the thickest part, so I think these pieces are ready. Still a lot of pressure on this one. <laughs> oh, it better be good. We've been raving about it. Yeah, been talking it up. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Look out, look out. Now, I mean, if we were really in the pros right now, we'd be plating this on some fluffed pilaf. You're stressing me out. Your stress level needs to come down. I want this to be perfect. I want the fish and freaks to get the full potential. A good, a good cook does not crack under pressure. All right, guys, all fish was off. And the internal tip was uh, 135 to 145. Now, we're just going to take some butter and we're going to whisk this butter around until it gets some delicious caramelized bits of brown in it. And the, just this right here on top of the fish will, will complement, it will smooth everything out, it'll be phenomenal. Also adds a little bit of uh, nuttiness and sweetness to your, to your rice. It's really the simplest sauce ever invented. Once it starts turning brown, that's when you're good to go. And it's gonna start to form these little brown bits. And it'll give off like a sweet, nutty smell. All right, there we have it. And we're gonna add some of this brown butter. You see that color? Delicious looking color. I'm just gonna add a little bit of that on top. Do the same thing for Stephanie's plate. Yes, please. Yeah, it's, it, yours is rested. Mm. It's rested, you want a little bit more brown butter? I do, I want some it? brown butter over here. Oh, we need it in the cracks. Get those little brown bits of flavor. Mm -hmm. Mmm. That just melts in your mouth. It's sweet. With a hint of crunchiness. That's like a hint of like nutty sweet. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. Nutty sweet. Yep. Simple. By far, I think it's my favorite. Wow. Let's let's take a closer. Oh. Mm. She's digging in. She's not even letting us get a mm -mm. <laughs> good close up. Very All right, let me see it. Let me get a good very full bodied flaky wow. yeah it just crispy. it looks it looks flaky and juicy all at mm. the same time just a hint of crisp 
That was delicious. That's all I can say, because I just want to eat it. <laughs> Goodbye. Simple, simple, simple. Cooked to perfection. Oh man, I'm telling you. Okay. I used to be a real big fan of the oven cook. Um, hitting it, hitting it with the um, with the stainless or the cast iron, and then putting it in the oven to finish it. This is the way because you get more of a crust, especially with the size of a fish. If I was cooking like a real thick piece, like like a piece like that, like a giant fifty pound blue cat fillet or something like that, I probably would need to finish it in the oven. This you don't need to, and I can probe along the way because each piece is gonna come out different. That's the key. And also what I like to do is cut the, the filet into two because you're gonna have a thick side, you're gonna have a thinner side. That way you're getting a uh, just a much more consistent um, piece of meat when you cut it up like that and cook it, and take it off at the right temp. And this particular piece right here, this might be my favorite, that my best catfish I've ever cooked right here. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Unbelievable. Ah. Ah. You got a water bottle. Hey, what do you think about fishing? Catfish fun. Catfish and fun. And you like eating them too. For some reason, you like spicy, and your sister will not even touch any spice. Well, you did good. You did good, son. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. That was a big moment for me, guys. And for him, I guess, going out there. You want to touch it? It's soft. It's a microphone. Yeah. Yeah. Because we, we got to go out. He got to catch his uh, his first catfish. You know, help, help me hand line in a, a catfish jug. Um, watching the whole process, you know, the kids are around when I'm cleaning fish and, and cooking the fish and, you know, we consume them together as a family and it's, um, I've said it multiple times, but that, that is my favorite thing, adventuring, but also capturing, uh, bringing back the preparation and then enjoying that with the family because it just keeps the adventure going, makes it more special. So I'm telling you guys, do not sleep on the catfish. I mean, we caught that one and fed the whole family tonight. And they are a great fish to freeze and then have again. I love vacuum sealing them, having them again. There's almost no difference in flavor. Uh, we, we had it just a few days ago that was frozen. We just had it fresh, um, but I'm telling you, it's amazing. So if you follow those steps that, uh, that I showed, you're gonna have one of the best fish you've ever had. You just gotta get out there and catch one. So thank you all for tuning in to uh, today's special episode, fishing with uh, my little buddy over here. His first time after turning three years old, going out on the water, catching a fish. I'm just so pumped about that. Please smash the like button for it. We got a really exciting hunt coming up here on the channel. We got more fishing to do, so keep it locked right here for more outdoor action and vlogs here at the Treehouse and Beyond. And I'll see you guys on the next one. You wanna reel it in? There you go. Yep, good job. Nothing on that one.